So in a certain way, the Europeans were practicing semi-slavery on each other, mm -hmm. okay? And in the fact, too, that they established the 13 colonies here, the whites that came from Europe were indentured servants. Mm -hmm. So they were in a type of servitude as well. Mm -hmm. and, and if you understand the fact that, that slavery uh, as an institution was a crime against humanity, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Europeans enslaved each other first. Mm -hmm. And then when they started enslaving us, they didn't really have any feeling because they didn't have any feeling for other Europeans mm -hmm. that they enslaved and put in the dungeons and mm -hmm. so forth in Europe. So that's the, the key thing, to realize that it was, it was a matter of human bondage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was a matter of the human condition, of the human population uh, being <laughs> enslaved. Now, again, I get back to the fact the worst thing about slavery for us mm -hmm. is that we were dislocated from our gods, our traditional gods, mm -hmm. our traditional mm -hmm. religions. We were dislocated from our names. So to this very day, mm -hmm. we can't, if, I, if I look at you or you look at me, I might have some of the phenotypical traits of a Yoruba or an Ashante or an mm -hmm. Igbo or a Pygmy, but we couldn't really say yeah. that I'm a Yoruba or that you're an Igbo, mm -hmm. but someone who's from Africa mm -hmm. would look at us who's still in contact with their culture and say, well, mm -hmm. you look like an Ashante mm -hmm. or you look like an Igbo mm -hmm. or you look like an, a Kikuyu. And, and it sort of hurts to know that we look like Mm -hmm. a member of an ethnic group on mm -hmm. the African continent, but we don't mm -hmm. have the culture, mm -hmm. the traditions, or the language. And, and of <coughs> all the things that happened, yeah. mm -hmm. I, thought, I think that depriving us of our birth rights mm -hmm. was the most devastating thing. Now, with respect to the Constitution, that gives me uh, the idea that it's important for African Americans mm -hmm. to make a distinction between citizenship and nationality. Good. Mm -hmm. When we talk about nationality, we're talking about our African ethnicity. When we're talking about citizenship, we're talking about the fact that we were born and naturalized in the United States and we should have the protection of the Constitution. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we get very schizophrenic about that. that we, we need to uh, mm -hmm. discover who we are and also establish our culture. All the other ethnic groups in this country know the difference between uh, nationality and citizenship. Mm -hmm. They are um, of Greek origin or Japanese origin or mm -hmm. Romanian origin or Arab origin. But we, because of slavery, are unable to identify with a strong ethnicity. Mm -hmm. The other point I think is important, too, is that we need to start developing plans for self-development, yeah. plans mm -hmm. of self-determination. We need to really move away from so much protesting about white, what white people have done to us, what they're continuing to do. Mm -hmm. That's not going to change anytime soon. Mm -hmm. We need to start developing internally, developing economic mm -hmm. institutions in our society, developing schools in our society, developing mm -hmm. cultural uh, habits in our society mm -hmm. so that we can build ourselves up culturally, then we can develop economically. And I think that's mm -hmm. the key point that uh, those of us in the vineyard of Africana studies recognize mm -hmm. that it's not, we, we shouldn't spend a lot of time talking about racism. Yeah. The sociologists have written all of that. Mm -hmm. Our time needs to be focused on how can we put our extended families to back together, yeah. bring the African father back home. How can we develop our culture so that we can have some values of our own that make us separate, unique, mm -hmm. and distinct from other people? Mm -hmm. And how can we develop our community so we can get the violence and the drugs out of our mm -hmm. community? That's what we need to focus mm -hmm. our energy rather than whining and complaining about white people. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Doctor, I think quite mm -hmm. recently, uh, during the Christmas holiday yeah. and, uh, period, mm -hmm. uh, there was uh, a movement, a cultural movement among uh, African Americans mm -hmm. called the Kwanzaa. Yes. Movement. Yes. And I think you've already indicated that culture plays a very, very significant role mm -hmm. uh, in the American experience, I mean, in the uh, 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 national experience of any group. And let's have you to talk about uh, Kwanzaa and tell our audience exactly what is the uh, Kwanzaa cultural movement and what does it signify and all of those things that you believe to be significant in terms of dealing with that movement. Mm -hmm. Kwanzaa was created in 1966 at a time when many of our people were cultural nationalists and we were also advocates of black power. Mm -hmm. And it was created by Dr. Maulana Karenga who looked at the African continent as a whole mm -hmm. and observed that we were an agrarian people and on a seasonal basis we would have festivals. Mm -hmm. Festivals based on the, um, the, the harvest of crops, mm -hmm. whether it was the yam or the uh, corn crop. And once we uh, harvest that first crop, we would get together uh, and celebrate. And, and it would be a period of ingathering, a period of mm -hmm. thanking God, and a period of thanksgiving. And so from this uh, period,
period of celebrating the Harvest Festival came mm -hmm. the principle and the idea of Kwanzaa. Karinga decided that, uh, rightfully so, there were those of us in the 60s who disagreed with him, mm -hmm. his position in the 1960s that the most important thing for mm -hmm. us to come to grips with was culture. Mm -hmm. Some people felt that we should focus on civil rights. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Other people felt that we should focus on politics. Mm -hmm. They had different organizations, but he uh, was among those who felt that culture was the most important thing to focus on. Mm -hmm. So he created a holiday that was based on family, culture, and mm -hmm. community. Mm -hmm. And out of that, he had developed an ideology called the Kawaita, which embraced certain traditional African values. Mm -hmm. Among them would be um, Umoja, unity, Kujitagalia, self-determination, Ujima, collective work and responsibility, mm -hmm. um, Ujamaa, cooperative economics, Nia, purpose, Kaumba creativity and Imani faith. Mm -hmm. And each of the seven days of Kwanzaa between December 26th and January 1st are designed to focus on one of those principles. The first day we focus on unity, the second day on Kuji Chagalia, and the seventh day we focus on Imani, which is faith, and that will be January 1st. Mm -hmm. Now it's very interesting that, uh, and, and we shared this event together, that on that last day of Kwanzaa, January the 1st, is also the celebration of the Emancipation Proclamation. Proclamation yeah. For those of us who are in this mm -hmm. part of the country, now our brothers and sisters out in Texas celebrate mm -hmm. Juneteenth mm -hmm. because they didn't get the word till way in June. June. We got yeah. it early, you see, but, but mm -hmm. we also celebrate mm -hmm. that. And, and I think it's a, a very powerful...